Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today I'm privileged to be with Dean Ray. Hey Lauren Yates. Hi Dean, how are you going today? I'm good. Thank you for good. having us at your beautiful house. It's Rose's Aren't Tower. I'm loving this like beautiful background, your lovely studio here. It may look set up, but it's, it's not. not. Literally, it's we just like sat down in chairs. <laughs> <laughs> we just spun the chairs around. Yeah. So welcome back to Rave It Up. It's, Thank it's you. It's been a while. Last time you were on was June last year. June last year. June. I remember we were in a we were in like a, a, a courtyard of a hotel. A little, a little secret garden. Was I staying? I was staying in that hotel. You wasn't were. I? It was, must have been on the Crease Eden tour. Yeah, yeah. It was Dank Street. You actually remember the street? That yeah. is so impressive. Because it was dank. <laughs> I've never forgotten that place. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only reason he remembers it. You're never going to go back there again. It was a nice courtyard, though. I'll give it, Great I'll courtyard. Give it that. Lovely vibe. Our little secret garden. Yeah. Go check out that previous interview if you haven't already. That was a lot of fun, I wore wasn't a, it? I wore a suit. You did? I remember it. All black. I don't even Very remember what rocker. happened yesterday, but I can remember that interview. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad. It's so memorable. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it has been a while. Yeah. So, welcome back to Rave It Up. It's, it's Thank you. It, since it has been a long time, you know, we've caught up in that time. Yeah. But the listeners probably don't know what you've been up to. So what have no. you been up to in that time? We're catching up with Lauren Yates. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Having our little lunch catch-ups. <laughs> we, we had a lunch catch-up in Cronulla one time. Yeah, thank you for remembering. It's all right. I had poached eggs. It was nice. That was November last year. <laughs> yeah, Sydney Music Week. He had the poached eggs when I wasn't there, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She I was, was like, I'm, I'm, gonna be, like, I'm just like five minutes away. And he's like, I've already eaten. <laughs> when the was, whole point was that She was lunch. late and I was hungry, so I, I don't, she got I there. Wasn't I wasn't late. Weren't you? Oh, I must have been early. I was, was hungry. Really I hungry. It was really good food. It's great. <laughs> Shame you couldn't be there for it. <laughs> I um, had food later on, so it's all good. I've been doing a lot since then. Um, I haven't been touring. I've done a, just a few little festival gigs here and there. I did Gimpy Muster, I did uh, Music in the Vines, and a little thing at Clarence Town, which is happening again this Saturday. Um, I'm just going out to hang out and have a look. That's awesome. Um, but I, a lot of business changes for me. Um, I, I've moved from a label and previous management and um, I wanted to, to release an album and uh, I wanted some more control over it. Mm. So um, I started up a GoFundMe campaign. Ah. Um, it was early this year. And I was just overwhelmed, I still am, by the response that it, it received, I think. You have I so made many fans. 10, Why are you surprised? <laughs> like 10 grand over the, the goal that Jeez. I was looking for. Yeah. It was unbelievable. People... Um, there were massive donations coming in and then there were just heaps and heaps of people just throwing fives and tens and it's amazing how it all adds up, you know, you just go yeah. through and it just, it was incredible, absolutely incredible. And my promise to back then with the campaign was I will have an album out this year. Mm. Um, so yeah, once that was over, I, I started recording and uh, must have spent probably three to four months in and out of the studio recording and um, I was I did it at Wick Studios in Melbourne with my friend Dan Corless and both of us we, um, we produced the record together and he, he asked me on the first days like so w what sound are you going for I said what are you talking about <laughs> he's like what do you want to sound like Dean Ray <laughs> I said I want to sound like me mm. he said what's that sound like I said I don't know haven't you and heard I, my stuff I before? I said, look, and I went over to, um, to my bag and I pulled out a bottle of Jack Daniels. And I sat it on the console. And I said, we drink this, we record music. I said, that's my sound. <laughs> He's like, okay. That. And um, that's how it came out. And it's a very, it's a, it's a raw representation of, of who I am musically. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people have come up and they're like, oh, you know, like it's quite, it's quite country infused, this album and storyteller and... You know, like, it's not very rock star. And I'm, I'm like, I never was. Mm. I was misportrayed as that. Um, I have always had a bit of a rock and roll vibe about me, but my music isn't um, straight up rock, you mm. know? You want that sort of straight up rock, you want to listen to Cherry Dolls or Velvet Addiction. I'm more the acoustic storyteller guy who busts out electric guitar now and then. Yeah. So um, I wanted this album to be very strictly that, so that people can go, oh, okay, right, that's what he is. 
Um, and this is just a flavour. The next album will, will be based around my style, but I'll throw in other elements of me. Mm. So, yeah. So, did you spend that whole time in Melbourne, or did you keep coming back and forth um, well, while I you were moved, recording? I was still living there at the time. I moved here in March, I think, or April. So, from when I moved here, I would have spent, I did two, two trips down doing recording and then I've been back I mean I get back to Melbourne all the time I freaking love Melbourne mm. beautiful city and uh, the people down there are fantastic so I've done both my film clips I did down there um, I'll be doing a launch down there and a launch in Sydney oh wow yeah cool so, uh, I'll have some deets about that pretty soon yes please please send it to us <laughs> so this new album The Messenger is out now people should know about it oh, totally but got go a check copy. it out I've totally got a copy right here Oh, look at that organisation. I wonder how long that's been sitting there. <laughs> Since uh, last Friday, when it was released. Isn't that I, um, amazing? That looks so I good. Was, I was at the mall last Friday, and I thought, I wonder if it's actually in the shops on the day of its release. Surely that's that's what happens, right? I don't know. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how this works. I went in there, it was, so I... Um, you bought your own I bought CD. a copy. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Look at those moral picks, by the way. Look, Thank look you. at those. Looking so good. Jeez. It was. Um, that was all independently released as well. Yep. So um, MGM have come on board. The good guys, Sebastian Chase at MGM. Um, I went for a meeting with Sebastian and and he and he, he dug what I was doing and it's like sweet, let's do it. I was like, okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to yeah. be. That's sick. So, um, yeah, we got to it, and it's all out now. It's such a good feeling to have it have it all out, and um, and a hard copy too. A hard copy. Yeah, not just you know, yeah. MP3s on online. It's so good. Like hard copies are dying. You know, they're they're going to be a thing of the past. They'll be a limited run. They won't be something that people are going to print many yeah. of. You know, I'm not doing a, a whole amount, like a, a large amount of of hard copies. It's sort of like um, books, it's, you know. People go on ebooks now, and yeah, I mean, it's still an experience. It's a thing like there's always going to be the war between the human experience of of staying there and holding a record and the environmental change. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, it's something that I'd like to phase out in the long run is um, hard copies because they won't be necessary. No, I think I'll print. I mean, I'll always, I always want to do vinyl. At some stage, well, it's coming back, and that's people, more of, a lot more people doing it. That's more of a, an experience. I really enjoy it. Like when you open a record, just the smell of it, mm. it's insane. It's just really nice, and the sound quality is different. It's just a whole. I don't know. You can sit down with a group of people and listen to vinyls, and have these music appreciation nights. Whereas mm. MP3s, you're just too quick to skip to the next song if the intro was boring. It's yes. Like, <laughs> whereas a vinyl, it's too much effort to get up and change the next song because you've got to try and find that little crease in between the tracks. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I can't be bothered. Just, let's listen to the whole let's song. Let's, the give whole it, song. Yeah. let's give it its three and a half minutes. Yeah. yeah. And I think with vinyls and CDs, you know, people buy them because it's more like a collectible sort of. You're not really... Well, I guess you are buying it for the music, obviously, but then after a while, it's just put on the shelf, you know? It's a collection. It's an, yeah. It definitely is, you know? And, and I've still I think, got my um, collection of CDs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't have any CDs anymore. I um, I just gave them all to Vinny's. Got oh, rid of them. I uploaded them to the computer and gave them away. And then, um, but vinyls is something that, yeah, I seriously, if I move house, it's several boxes of really heavy vinyls, yep. you know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's annoying to carry around, but I I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. First thing you'd take if there was a fire? You'd probably take the guitars, I'd though, I'd probably grab the yeah. guitars, um, <laughs> vinyls would be a bit hard. If there's a fire, though, the first thing I would heavy. take is I'd probably take the people that are in the house. Good. To try, if there's other people <laughs> in the house at the time, try and wake them up, be like, hey, so there's We're a fire. We're about to die. There's a fire, right? Um... Probably I'm, I'm gonna here. leave. I don't I'm gonna know grab about you. a couple of guitars and some records and, and a few books. Uh, if you, I'm gonna take my computer as well. So if you want to get out, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Give me a hand with some of this stuff. <laughs> Please help me with the vinyls. <laughs> <laughs> now with this album, I have noticed it's a lot more country sounding as well. Have you, have you found that? Is that deliberate or is just yeah? Let's just get the Jack Daniels out and it's um, see what happens. I've always been kind of a alternative country infused guy. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm, very, I'm a hybrid act. Play all different stuff. This, Ooh, I like that. This album is alternative country folk and a bit of, you know, there's times there's a bit, a bit of soft rock in there, but mm. it's mostly, it's primarily old country. Um, that's a flavor. I really get into 60s and 70s rock and I write stuff like that. Mm. And then I write blues music and um, mainstream pop sort of stuff. But it's, um, that's really the core of mm. what I do. I guess whatever you feel in the moment, right? Yeah. yeah. Most most music that I come out with is, is um, similar to what you would hear on The Messenger. Yeah. And... On the album, there's a lot of amazing songs, and I think my favourite was probably Six Feet Under. It was just so catchy. <laughs> I know it's quite a like depressing song. You think about it, but it was like really catchy. It's a murder song. Yeah. <laughs> he, he he wants been, her gone. <laughs> I've been getting uh, a lot of positive feedback about. Yeah, I don't know why I'm saying song. it's catchy, it's a, but it is. <laughs> it's catchy. Um, I was with a record label when I wrote that, and they refused. They were like, never ever will we release that. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay, well, it might be time for me to shop around because that's one of the coolest, coolest yeah, thanks Bobby to songs. MGM. <laughs> Thank you, MGM. If you don't listen um, to the lyrics, you're okay. <laughs> I didn't even tell my current manager, Lisa, I didn't tell her that it was on there. I was like, oh, yeah, no, I left. <laughs> just in case she protested. I didn't want to have a protest. I mean, at the end of the day, I was always putting that song on this record because it's... Um, you had faith it's, in it. Yeah, it's I when I play that song live, it has such a fun response. Mm. Um, you know, my concern was right when I'm live, I'm able to to say to the audience, "Okay, this next song's light-hearted. I'm not, in fact, a murderer." <laughs> I um, don't actually want to kill someone and put them six feet under. <laughs> yeah, um, with a CD, I can't do that. So I was like, oh, I hope it still comes across light-hearted. You know, mm. um, which I which I think it does. People are enjoying it. And I mean, there's so many people out there that listen to music and not the words anyway. So um, I'm sure there's, there's, you know, people out there that, that are digging that song don't know it's about uh, yeah. a relationship where someone's cheated on you and you've killed them, put them in the, yeah. in, in the ground and you're, you're confessing to the, to the court. Well, when, when I saw the title of the song, I was like, is that about what I think it's about? It's totally about what you think it's <laughs> yeah. about. There's a few songs on the, on the album that are totally about what you think they're about. Um, Pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah, I, yeah. Had, I had someone recently say, so, so yeah, you've got like, there's a murder song, an uh, alcohol song, and like a, a weed anthem. I was like, yeah. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, all, <laughs> all on the one <laughs> compact disc. <laughs> so are they all based on true stories, except for the six feet under, unless you're admitting that right now? They're based... Then um, we might want to leave. We might want to leave now. They come, they come from true places. Um... Whether they're true stories or not, like Six Feet Under, I I think I just channeled a bit of cash at the time. I didn't, I just wrote that song in maybe five, ten minutes. It just wow, nice and quick. Out, just poured out on the page and I was like, sick, that's awesome. Another one little done. A bit, uh, little bit edgy, but awesome, let's do it. Yeah. And why did you call it The Messenger? Um, I don't know if I'm the only one looking at the album name going, interesting. You know, there's 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 no song title called The Messenger. You know, some people just yeah, I don't, name it after a song in the album. I think that's uh, as a as an artist, you are primarily a, a creative person, right? Mm. If you just call your album uh, Dean a, Ray. a name, <laughs> a, a, a song title that's on the album, well, that that's not creative. Your song title is uh, is an opportunity for you to once again be creative. So why not? Mm. Why not do that? Um, and if it was the name of the, uh, you know, song title, well, it's self-explanatory. No one's going to ask you it in an interview, are they? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, my songs, for the most part, are like they're spiritually channeled, mm. so they come from somewhere else, and I'm more just a vehicle for them to come through, and I write them down, yeah. um, and they they come from other people as well. People will tell me their stories. Um, and I will convey that into music and then hand it out so people can be listening to to other people's stories. So it's, um, I've never, I've always seen myself as just a, as a vehicle for um, for a, a higher message. Yeah, Whether it technically it the a, messenger. That's right, that's right. <laughs> okay, I'm like I like the, that. I'm like the mailman. That's creative. Whole new meeting. Because I remember you mentioning that when we went out to lunch. 
the whole spiritual channeling. And I found that really interesting. There's a lot of artists that do it. Yeah. Um, I never chose to do it. I just started just doing happens. it naturally when I was a kid. You, you just kind of, you blank out and you, write, and, you and you come to and you've written a song. Mm. And it's there. And, um, you know, if you can let go and really tap into that. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that call it the inspiration. Mm. Um, because they're too afraid that they'll get locked in an institution for saying it's spiritual. But I think the world is turning and that um, society is understanding that spirituality is a real thing and it's out there. Um, what happens when you die? Who knows? I don't care. Right now, you know, be in this moment. Yep. Um, and I've experienced it, so I believe in it. Mm. And that's how I work. If I witness something, I'll believe in it because I am skeptic as shit. <laughs> and <laughs> thank I you for so, admitting. <laughs> yeah, like um, yeah, I'm a skeptic and uh, I'm cynical. And if yeah, I have to witness or experience it to believe. To believe it, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good for the listeners to hear that though, because every artist writes songs differently or channels it differently. And yeah, yeah, it's good to a lot of your learn something new. Is, um, when people, you, it's like the creative zone, you um, tap into this frequency and it's like you're, you're like a, a radio, you're pulling information from the stratosphere that's coming from, and I, I don't know where it's coming from, but it's coming from somewhere and it's not me. And that's why Six Feet Under came out in like 10 minutes. <laughs> that's right, that's how they, some of them are born like that. Some come out with just a hint you only, you're only able to, to get just a bit of it, like a verse or mm -hmm. a chorus. And you're like, man, and then you've got to really labor over it. Um, some songs are easy, but I think the majority of songs are actually, to get them to a, a good level, you've got to put the work in. You can't just write it in five minutes and be like, sweet, that's it. Because even Six Feet Under being five or ten minutes, um, I've revised over that many times mm, and tested it, it and tried to change it and have rewritten certain parts of it and it's always come back to the original. There you go. Opening your eyes to new things. <laughs> yes. And I did notice in the beginning of Indiana, it was like a sound of some footsteps. Did you record that yourself? Yeah, 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 we did. Me and um, it's creative. The, guy, the guy that I wrote the song with, um, Ruin Westberg, when we recorded the demo, we, um, I said, I want, I want the intro. Like, he's like, what are you thinking for an intro? Like, I said, I want the, this intro, but then I want this, uh, like sound escape intro where I'm, it's as if I'm walking home because the first mm. verse is sundown, I come home and I walk, th you know, through the, the memories, like past the memories in our hall, which is, you know, photographs hanging on the, on the walls. And I was like, I want it to sound like that. So we just recorded, put a condenser mic near the floor and I just walked through the studio door. That's and, amazing. Um, it's incredible how, how it all happens. You don't really think about that. Yeah, we just put a mic on the floor. Yeah. Just mic <laughs> While you floor. actually walked. <laughs> yeah. Wow, incredible. They were my shoes. They were my, they were my shoes I was walking in. <laughs> it's actually Dean walking, actually not just a random shoes. person. Not some random. Not just a sound you found on the internet. There was, all yeah, real. And, and a nice pair of shoes. They were a gift from a... From a um, Pretty pretty wild man down in Melbourne, and he's uh, he said I've grown out of these these Gucci's were given to me, and I've grown out of them. And I was like, I'll try them on, perfect fit. <laughs> Anytime I see him, he's like, you looking after those shoes? And I'm like, yeah, man. I yeah. Wear them. They, they were the like, sound in my in my Good. song. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad you're looking after. Well, shout out to him. Yeah. Whoever he is. <laughs> <laughs> And I've got to say as well, your song Country Song is like so beautiful. Like I, I've always thought you're an incredible songwriter, but for that song, it gave me goosebumps. Like you say, she's the sunshine, I'm the rain, and she's a love song, I'm the pain. Like, and she's a country song. I'm like, oh my God. Have you ever <laughs> actually sung that to a girl? Like, I think that'd be very well received. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've sung that to, um, to Mel, the girl that I'm singing it with. She's, um, her and I've been dating for a while now. Aww. And, um, I wrote the song when I was 16, and that's. I was about song. to say, was it about her? But no. <laughs> no, it was a it was a song that came out years ago and never never made sense to me as to why or who it was about. And then um, Melanie's a country singer, and she grew up on a sheep farm. And then I I delved back and I, I relearned the song. I was like. Oh, that's totally about her. That's yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> Before now, you even met her. <laughs> finally, 10 years later, it makes sense. Um, 
So I asked her if she'd uh, if she'd sing on it with me. Aww. I think it's come up quite cute. It has. That's it. That even means more when it's you know someone you're actually with. Yeah, yeah. and like the Beautiful two of us. Duet. Um, I initially like my idea. I said, "Well, I'll get you to fly you down to Melbourne, um, and we'll record everything just us." Mm. Um, and turned out she she flunked out and just played tambourine incredible tambourine <laughs> and sang and i was left to play all the acoustic guitars electric guitars banjo harmonica drums bass like <laughs> it's like thanks for coming sweetie it like... was a big day for dean <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't do much at all but sang like an angel no oh, well that's what matters yeah. it still came out beautifully she uh she produced indiana Oh. Yeah, she's got a good ear with um, with throwing in ideas with songs and when you're recording them and creating them uh, in the studio. And I said, would you like to produce a song? I said, I've got a song I think that would suit your style of, of ideas. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, which was weird, you know, like having your partner produce be totally your work. <laughs> in control of one of your one of your works. Mm. And um, But yeah, she's like, no, no, not like that. You, I, I'm hearing this. And I'm like, no, but it, okay. <laughs> yeah, yes, dear. <laughs> Whatever you want, dear. <laughs> no, I don't want. Uh, that's right. You're producing this song. <laughs> she did a great job. Yeah, I really like what she, she produced did a lot song. of her stuff, does she as well? Co-produced, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. she kind of had a. She's got a already... very nice touch. Wow. Yeah, good songwriter too. So who knows? Maybe some future songs of yours she'll be producing too. You never know. We'll see. We'll keep us posted. She may just end up being a. A hot shot producer as well. Oh, on on a, on the side. Other than her, she'll do her live performances and might, you know, just produce Lady Gaga's next record. Ooh. Oh, that's aiming high. I like oh, it. Oh, mate, you gotta aim high. Yeah, of course, always. Always aim high. Like, I gotta come see her perform. I'm sorry I couldn't come. Was it last week? Was it last week? Or the week before? When you invited me to come along? Probably one of those. Yeah. Should, should have come along. You should have. I was, I was busy that day, but another day. Let me she'll know in be, advance. She'll be doing Tamworth Festival, and yeah, she's got um, she's locked in CMC Rocks as well. So oh, going on for fantastic. her. Fantastic. Yeah, should have given me more notice. It was just like, yeah, it's on this afternoon. I'm like, uh. Oh yeah, I don't give people like, notice. Yeah, I um. <laughs> I forget. I, I, I go. Uh, I live day by day. Is my thing. Um. So I, when I wake up in the morning, I look at the calendar. I'm like, oh yeah, I've got this today. No, I forgot about that. Um, it's not not often I'm. Oh, I got that rave it up interview think, today. Yeah, I don't think too far in advance. So yeah, planning things has never really been my forte. So this was probably the furthest you've ever planned in advance for this interview. This is pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> not bad for me. There you go. Yeah. I always confirm anyway, so there's no way you would have forgotten. No, <laughs> would never have forgotten. No, you can't forget rave it up. <laughs> now, <laughs> Sapphire as well, I've got to say, is very relatable. E everyone goes through those kind of low points in life. I think we can all agree with that. And mm. as you say, we all fall out of line. So can you tell us more about this song? Was this, you know, something that means a lot to you in your life? Something that came yeah, up? Yeah, I, I wrote that for a friend of mine who um, has very low self-esteem. Oh. Um, I don't know why, but she's um, probably one of the kindest people you'll ever meet, and she's actually one of the strongest people you'll ever meet. But she doesn't think that. Aww. She does. She's not aware of that. You know. I'm sure one day she'll she'll do some self discovery and figure out she's actually pretty tops. Yeah. Um, and she's got really big blue eyes. Oh. So I wrote. Yeah, that's that's what it's about. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, sapphire. Mm, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so has she heard it now? And like believes in herself a little bit more. I haven't told her. No, oh, sure. this song <laughs> is about you. <laughs> if it's uh, if it's meant to be, the song will find her and she'll understand. Maybe. Yeah. Or she'll probably listen to it thinking about it's about someone else. No, no, she'd get it. She'd get it. Yeah, she, well, she'd relate to it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So that's the album, guys. Just went through a few of the songs there because I had to listen to it. I was like, oh, I just gotta you know get to the nitty gritty here and yeah. find out. And I gotta say, you know, kind of going down memory lane here, mm -hmm. still my favorite song of yours is Coming Back. Really? Yes, it is still like in my iTunes. I listen to it all the time because it just it makes you feel really good. Like you're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm coming back. You know, you can't mess with me, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is this a true story as well? This song? No, that was um, a manufactured piece that was written for me. Oh. Um, so I I don't relate with it as much because I didn't have. Uh, any input 
mm. into it really so um that's disappointing but yeah it's not something that i've ever connected with live because huh. it didn't come from me true but um i see how the audience connects with it and that makes a difference mm. so you, you don't relate to it at all even when, you know maybe like the beginning of your career when you're trying to um lift off <laughs> my my song that i relate to that's like that <clears throat> is um won't back down by tom petty mm. so that's more the the style that i'm into you know like um yeah coming back to it's too mainstream for me it's a bit too pop that's probably why i like it <laughs> <laughs> but i do all, like all, all this album because as i said it's very country and i'm a big country fan as well so there you go i'm a fan of a bit of everything all, i didn't realize music how, genres. i didn't realize how uh country influenced this record was until it came out and i really sat down and listened to it and you're like whoa I was like, <laughs> wow this is super old country i dig it i like yeah. it I, i'm into it i'm into it because um, my my whole thing for a long time has been about acoustic rock mm. and uh, people are like what is that i'm like here i'll show you and it's you know it's just like acoustic driven music really powerful acoustic guitar work yeah um which is what this album is it's in there you know like um songs like green and, and the winnings and the winnings is exactly what i mean when i'm say acoustic rock oh yeah i got i got that vibe yeah yeah i played it on the show for you as well thank you so very everyone's much. heard it <laughs> so everyone go check out that album it's incredible please do the winnings on it as well so go check it out <laughs> And Dean, even though you've already achieved so much in your career, what else can we expect from you in the future? Is there a tour coming up with this there album? There is a tour. And- there is a tour. I'll be touring this record, and um, I've already got another record ready. Oh, so so organized. I love um, it. Yeah, so we'll be touring this record, and from now on, yeah, we'll be just on the road a lot and releasing a lot of music and traveling internationally to Ooh. new destinations get the dean ray name across the world just gotta spread the love mate of course that's all it is so when are you touring is it you know the look the end of this year we're or planning uh we're planning it at the moment um i've been talking with my agent and manager about when and where and uh, i want it to be a little bit old school i used to tour via planes and hire cars so Mm. i'd fly in and do a few shows here then fly out and it's just it's not as cool um i think some i really enjoy traveling so uh we're working at planning a tour together where we can uh, me and my band can go in a bus and travel Mm. so yeah play play a show drive four hours play another show and you know it's those it's the traveling in between that's the really awesome personal part you know yeah. when you're just flying places your personal experience is quite bland because you're in airports and brand new cars whereas if you're in a bus and you're traveling around you're all laughing and joking and you stop have a barbecue and play some cricket and yeah, you get to you know, see more and, of the country that way yeah that's mm. right you know you actually get to see the land that you're crossing and that's that's why i really wanted to be a musician when I was a kid because I wanted to see the world and I think um, seeing my own backyard more of it I mean I've seen a hell of a lot of it um, up until now but there's a, there's so many places I haven't seen and I want to go to those places mm. yeah. does that tire you out a little bit with all that traveling as well um, what do you think the plane stops tires you out even more planes are, yeah planes are tiring mm. yeah I um, I mean I I have been allergic to coffee and tea and coca-cola for about 10 years now i just had someone being allergic to it's it it's not that i'm allergic to it i just can't drink it yeah stomach, you don't like it yeah stomach problems um like ulcers and things like that i can't mm. drink that sort of stuff um so i've been lethargic for a long time yeah um so yeah, I'm, I'm used to that like tiredness so the traveling and stuff doesn't make me any different than i am right now yeah and you get on stage and it's like adrenaline rush right yeah 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 it's the i i get uh such a nice energy and such a nice natural high from performing live and receiving the energy from the audience you know? and the love <laughs> it's just great even even when you play a gig uh and you're not known and you're kind of ignored you know if you play those gigs 
it's still there's still something cool about it. Mm. Awesome. So keep us updated on the tour dates because definitely we want to come along. It'll look, and I'm sure we're looking at uh, starting in January. Okay. Yeah. Right. Smack right at the beginning of the year. Great yeah. way to start the year. Right. <laughs> now I know I asked you this last time, but your answer may have changed. Right. What advice would you give to the listeners who might want to follow their dreams of becoming a singer? Um, it's incredibly hard work. It's not, it's not like, uh, you know, if you think about hard work as digging holes and, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, tradies and whatnot and labourers, like a brickie's labour, that's a hard physical job. Mm. Um, it's not just physically, it's not overly physically hard. It's the emotional. Emotional, yeah. It's very emotionally hard. If you want to be someone who uh, is going to inspire other people, you can't just have a great voice. You've got to give them something from here mm. um, and it does all evolve around this spirituality you know music <clears throat> music is a spiritual language I can communicate with people who can't speak English via my music mm. and vice versa you know I've, um, I've got friends in Japan who suck at speaking English and we can communicate with music Incredible. And that's powerful, you mm -hmm. know. So that's that's the kind of thing. If you want to get into singing or music of any sort, you need to understand that that's the that's what it is. It's it's a communication tool. Um, so you need to be uh, you need to get to know who you are and dig into the things that you don't like about yourself. Confront them mm. and be honest with them, and um, <clears throat> and get out, give out what's in you in, inside you, mm. and that's what will make you go far. Plus, just it's always about whoever works the hardest. Yeah, as well. stay in the race. Yeah, yeah, you've got to work the hardest. You know, if you really want to be inspired, look up uh, Will Smith. Oh yeah, he's he's, he's incredible. Got, he's got the attitude of hard work ethic, and that's what you need. Mm. Look up to people like him. And Dean. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope everyone takes that on board because it was really good advice. You know, I've got a lot of advice on the show and it's got to be up there with the best, so thank you. No <laughs> now, we are getting to the end of the interview, unfortunately. It's gone very quickly. But before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to, where yes. should they go? Um, you can go on uh, my Facebook page, mm -hmm. so Dean Ray Music. If you Google Dean Ray you will find yeah, Facebook, website, Instagram, it all comes up there. Everything's on it. Yeah. Um, I can be contacted there. Instagram, I have a link. Um, you can email my manager straight from there and all my details, management details, everything's on the website. Um, I do have a page called Dean Ray Fan Club, which is like a community of I've people seen that, that, yeah. that hang out and discuss what I've been doing. And, they're and, very and supportive. They're great, mm. man. They're so, they're Shout so out to the fun. fan club. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can contact there as well. Mm, definitely. Go like that page. It's good. <laughs> good fun. And, uh, yeah, people people who are in the fan club page get, get uh, like we run cool competitions and things like that. Yeah. So be a part of the fan club, maybe. Maybe. That's, a, that's another one, yeah. <laughs> I want to change it, though, I don't like the name fan club. What would you call it? I don't know. I put out a... The Rayers. Dean yeah, Reyes. I put out a name, <laughs> like I put out, uh, asked everyone there like for thoughts and nothing really came to mind. I was thinking maybe the inmates. The inmates. <laughs> <laughs> That's or, like um, so serious. <laughs> yeah, and like I just thought it'd be cool that like, you could, everyone could get a designated number and you could like <laughs> purchase a striped uniform. And, yeah, like, so you're no longer a name, you're a your, number. <laughs> you could, no, you could get your uh, your prison your prison PJ <laughs> sent out, you know, and it's, <laughs> how cool would that be? With but the I'm Dean still, Ray logo on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still deciding on what, what name I think's best. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, I just, I'm not, I'm not a massive believer you want to be different fan. than all just all the other fan clubs you know yeah and i think fan is kind of a i don't know it just doesn't they float like your with me. community they that's like right it's like a community yeah it's like a little village of people that dig the same thing yeah so all for, for all the fans out there go let d know what you think of the inmate yes, idea. yes please actually yes yeah, send us, i think uh, it's a funny idea and i think it would I be some... awesome <laughs> it would like so stand out i It'd need uh, i need something that's this different yeah that's great so good luck 
And thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. I for really your time. appreciate your time, actually, because you're, okay. you're so busy. Yeah. Mate, not today. No, not today. I today today yeah. is the chill day. Today I am doing rave it up, and I'm going to a Halloween party tonight. That's early. Um, <laughs> Yep. It's not even Halloween yet. <laughs> I know, but it's an industry thing, and yep. everyone in the industry is busy on Halloween. So we're so you're doing dress early. up. Yep, I'm going as a as a panda. A panda. Yep. You've got like a whole panda suit or panda onesie or something. I found a panda onesie. Oh, I love it. Which inspired <laughs> me to go as a panda, but I'm gonna have to do some really creepy makeup on it so that I'm not just. Panda. Who goes to a Halloween party as a cute panda, right? Um. There's a lot of cute little things that people dress up as. And yeah. Okay, would I go as a cute panda? No, That's not right. at all. So, <laughs> we need to do something there. That's something like a girl would go as, you know, because she still wants to look good, but, you know, she wants to be the cute panda. Yeah. So, I think, that's um, not you. <laughs> I think I've got a good idea. Yeah, I'll post pictures anyway. Please do. I want to see this. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll look later tonight. <laughs> Have a look. But definitely come back on the show whenever you like. Just... Consider this like your second home. Fantastic. Well, I'll have to. Uh, your home in your home. We'll have to do. We'll have to do a song. Definitely. We'll do a song soon. Or, or like show us how you produce everything. That'd be cool. Yeah. Show us how you, you do it all. <laughs> I think that will uh, show even more appreciation, you know, for the fans and yeah. But for everyone watching, as I mentioned before, go check out the Messenger. It's an incredible album. You'll love all the songs. And then let us know what your favorite one is. Yes. <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.